Hey there, let's talk about vector stores. Retrieval augmented generation is a very common approach to give more context to a pre-trained large language model. It enriches the prompt by information based on a similarity search in a vector store. This helps to increase efficiency by shortening the prompt, saving tokens and thus reducing costs significantly. The initial prompt or embedding of the source data usually happens once for every new document. But what if you have a source which changes from time to time or even more frequently? Just adding new versions of the same document does not do the job. Having multiple versions stored at the same time would lead to inaccurate results when retrieving information from the vector store. So it needs to forget older versions. Therefore, an upsert function exists which allows to replace old embeddings by their ID. But this only works if you know the ID of the entry in the vector store and, more importantly, it only works for smaller documents which fit into the token limit of the embeddings model you're using. In N8N we have the possibility to split larger documents into smaller chunks automatically, for example by using a token splitter. But when upserting we can only define the ID of one single chunk. And not to mention, the amount of chunks could even change over time since the length of the updated documents will most probably change. So what is the solution? Since the entire embedding is now being redone every time anyways, we can also go for deleting and creating instead of updating. Let's take a knowledge base built with Notion as an example here. Of course, you can also apply the mention strategy to all sorts of input data including large documents from a file storage. So let's take a look at the first entry here, which is a documentation of a fictional ERP system. Basically, it's just a title and a long description which we would like to push automatically into a vector store whenever we made a change. Now here is a workflow which does the embedding dynamically and also allows to interact with the entire data. Let me explain. This flow triggers every time a page in Notion was updated. Quick side note, I go for manual polling here because it's more accurate, but if you're on the cloud plan, you can just use the Notion trigger node instead, which saves you a lot of executions. So every page is being processed sequentially. This is where the deletion of the old entries happens, if there are any, but let me show this later so it's more understandable. In this step, the page content, the so-called Notion blocks, are being retrieved. Before they are combined, not just into a single item, but also into a single string. That data can be then inserted into a vector store. I use Superbase here because the underlying data can also be easily accessed by a regular node, which I will show you just in a minute. While saving, not only the data is split into smaller chunks, if necessary, but also some metadata is being stored. Most importantly, the ID of the source. So in this case, the Notion page ID. This is important so we can later dynamically find and delete all related chunks. This is how it looks in the vector store. These are the embeddings with their vector data, raw content, and their metadata. And here is the Notion page we looked at earlier, split into three chunks, which all have the same ID stored in the metadata. And these are the different IDs of the embeddings themselves, which are not sufficient for upserting as I mentioned in the beginning. So now let me jump back to the deletion part. We can use the regular Superbase node to simply search the metadata of all embeddings by the Notion page ID and delete all resulting lines from the database. To interact with the embedded data, we can use this simple chatbot. But please consider baking this functionality more into your workflows so your users have a better experience than having to deal with yet another chatbot. On that note, if you haven't yet, check out Vagent.io. It's a lightweight voice-activated interface which you can integrate with a single webhook. So now let's ask what future enhancements are planned for SynthiRP. As expected, we get the same four entries we see in Notion. Now let's see what happens if I update this page by removing something from the description.
After the workflow execution has finished, now let's ask for the same question again. And as you can see, the fourth option is gone, just like we did in Notion. What also happened is that the embeddings do not also have new IDs, which means that they have been replaced entirely, but also the reduction of the description led to a different amount of chunks. Earlier we had three, and now we have only two. By the way, this approach is also possible with a simple Postgres database using the PG Vector extension, or using custom HTTP requests, you can also get it to work with Pinecone and Quadrant. You can find a link to this NHN workflow template in the description down below. That's it for today, and see you soon.